The U.S. economy growing faster than expected, GDP increasing at a 2.8 percent annual pace with consumer spending, helping propel some of that growth. So what is this signal for the Fed's path forward for rate cuts? We want to talk about that and also what this ultimately means for the equity market. For that, we want to bring in Wei Lee, BlackRock's global chief investment strategist. We also have Greg Daco, EY chief economist. Great to see both of you, Greg, let me go to you because I think that this is more of an econ question, at least here at the top. We're trying to figure out how resilient the economy is up until this point. Ultimately, what this stronger than expected print means for the Fed's path forward. Does this ultimately take July off the table? Well, I think July was largely off the table before this print. Uh, but what this report shows is an economy that was still robust in the second quarter. Uh, there was not a major slowdown in terms of economic activity. We still had consumers spending, although they were exercising a little bit more discretion in a high price, high interest rate environment. We still had businesses investing, especially in high growth areas and growth areas that also drive stronger productivity uh, momentum. So those were the good signs in this GDP report. One thing that I will note is that we are seeing in the more recent data as we pass the mid-year point, we are seeing some signs of a labor market cool down, not a retrenchment, but a slowdown, which is in turn feeding into slower real disposable income growth and will likely lead to even more caution when it comes to consumer spending. So the economy is gently cooling, but still retains that robust pace, uh, which is quite encouraging from a broad perspective in terms of economic activity. Well, Wei, I want to bring you into the conversation because there are some signs of a soft landing, depending on where you look within the data. Do you think that is going to be enough for markets to reverse course from the significant stumble that we saw over the past 24 hours here? I think what really jumped uh, to me, uh, jumped out to me from the GDP print is the jump in the information processing equipment, high tech equipment spend that boosted the GDP print. It really goes to show that AI spend is now boosting growth. Previously, it was more of a, yes, we think that's going to happen. This is showing that that is happening. We do think that there is more legs, more runway for the AI investment theme to play out. But obviously, in the context of thinner liquidity during summer, uh, corporate buyback blackout, uh, stronger yen that has been a popular, um, well, weaker yen had been a popular funding leg for global carry trades and a stronger yen could unwind some of that. When you bring all the technical factors together, we're seeing a bit of a stumble, especially given how well this uh, theme has done. But in a broader context, from a fundamental perspective, we think that there is more to go. And today's GDP print is a sign of that happening uh, on a broader uh, basis. So wait, what does that mean for investors? Should they then be viewing this as a buying opportunity? Well, I, I would caution against automatic uh, buy the deep type of strategy. Obviously, we need to see where earnings are coming through. You know, you look at small cap, for example, that has been holding up better on a relative basis. But when we look at their earnings, you know, 40% of Russell 2000 uh, haven't actually delivered positive earnings uh, looking back the 12 months. So we do need to see earnings come uh, coming through in this current earnings season. And to the extent the markets dislocate from fundamental convictions, we do want to lean in. Um, you know, is market going to go up tomorrow? We don't know. But over a longer term horizon, we do think the fundamentals will prevail. And specifically, specifically when it comes to athletes, we look at kind of tech, um, industrials, energy, healthcare. These are the sectors that are seeing earnings upgrades, and we expect them to carry a lot of the earnings season strengths. Well, Greg, I want to go to you on the thesis we can derive from the earnings we've been getting in so far. Taking a look at the weakness that we've seen, for example, in luxury, in autos, of course, in airlines. Is that a plot that the Federal Reserve needs to be paying attention to? Or does something like the GDP number that we got in today pour cold water all over the potential weakness we're seeing in earnings? Well, I think generally speaking, we have an environment where consumers are suggesting that prudence is better uh, relative to exuberance. Uh, and they are being more discreet in their purchases, especially of high priced items. Um, but you have two consumers really out there. You have a consumer that is more highly uh, debt burdened, uh, one that is 
looking at weaker income growth that is being more careful with their outlays. And then you have higher income, less debt burden uh, consumers that are still spending relatively freely. Overall, though, what is happening is that you're still seeing this disinflationary momentum. We continue to see disinflation working its way through the economy, and that should allow the Fed to start recalibrating monetary policy. As I've said on the show before, um, I think July and perhaps even June would have been a good time to start recalibrating monetary policy and do so gradually. There's no need to bring rates down to zero because the economy is still robust. But you are seeing an environment where there are some initial signs of a cool down in economic activity. It's gentle, but it's disinflationary, which is exactly what the Fed wants to do. And therefore, now is the optimal time to start recalibrating monetary policy. So I expect next week, Fed policymakers will likely open the door with September rate cut um, and potentially even a December rate cut after that. All right, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you both so much for joining us. That was Wei Lee, BlackRock's Global Chief Investment Strategist. We also had Greg Daco. He is over at EY as their chief economist.